Welcome to the Two Chumps Football Podcast. It's a post-election Two Chumps Football Podcast. I'm Chad Wilson. That's Emil Calamina, and you know what we do here. We pick games. We pick games, and we pick games well. We don't pick presidents. We don't do that stuff here. We pick games. There's college football this weekend. There's NFL this weekend. There was last weekend. So my friend here is going to get us up to date on where we are in terms of our picks and performance this year. He had a great NFL weekend last week. I'm proud to say last weekend was, uh, in general, a big weekend for us overall. I mean, this year has been a grind. There's no doubt about it. We've, you know, we're, we don't lie here. Um, at this point in most seasons, we're way up. And that's not the case, but I think the worm is turning. And the good thing is the NFL season is only halfway done. So I feel like maybe we're starting to figure that out a little bit. Knock on wood. I don't want to jinx it. Well, I've been, I've, I've been, I'm, not saying, I'm saying as a, collectively, listen, I told you that I'm not heavy. I'm your brother. You carry me. Okay. But last week I finally pitched in. I feel like I did my part for the team. <laughs> he definitely, he definitely did that. So we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, in a minute. College and NFL coming up, but for you, if you just got here or you have been for a while and you have not, you know, graced us with your presence every week by subscribing to the show, whether you're watching us on YouTube or listening on your streaming device, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now. Also, you can follow the Two Chumps Football Podcast on both Twitter and TikTok at Two Chumps Pod for both of those. So check us out there. And um, let's jump into it, Amo. College football. I managed a winning week. I'm trying to creep over 500. The beginning of the college football yes. season was a disaster. I'm talking about main picks. Um, and then I, ma- I actually, actually won my off the sheet. Pick I mean, right. I mean, listen. I mean, I, I started last week. Uh, we we kept you basically even in college football, thanks to him. And then we got your way ahead on Sunday. But you, uh, you were our saving grace in college last week. Um, other than your first pick on San Diego State, um, they got a bunch of points in that game. And uh, Boise I, State. Look, they were never, from the word go, I think Boise State went down there and scored touchdowns their first four drives. Um, I think it was 28 nothing. It, it was definitely 21 nothing. I don't remember if it was 28 nothing. Um, but, yeah, it was obvious that Boise State was here to play and San Diego State was playing around. They cleaned it up at the end, but th- this – if you had Boise State, that game was never in doubt. Yeah. I was jealous of your other picks, to be honest with you, because, you know, when you start looking at someone else's picks and you're doing this, and I'm like, man, you know, I, mean, I know sometimes it's a little bit after the game starts, but, you know, Minnesota and Northwestern, you won on both of them. They were small lines. And I'm like, he found those. How did I miss them? Because, I mean, I, I, I start looking at the game, even when it started, and I saw you had them, and I'm like, these look like really good picks. I mean, I, I was like, well, how did I miss those? So anyway, two and one for you. You're getting close to the Mendoza line in college. You're 14 and 16. But when we get to the NFL section, you'll see Chad's having a good year overall. Uh, Me, I got trapped. Um, I took Penn State plus three in that game. And I don't want to say never, but it's going to be a long time before I take Penn State against a ranked team again because – there's I was just, with you, kind of now or never for them against, you know, against Ohio State, but at least in that situation. There was a million ways Ohio State tried to allow Penn State to have their glory. I mean, yes, they were giving them the opportunity. Howard to- throws a pick six. He fumbles the ball on the one yard line going into the end zone for a touchback. So, I mean, they did their damnedest to see if I could win this game. And even then, Penn State couldn't do it. So, I won't elaborate. Loser. Um, I don't know what – Chad's old team, just for you guys. I'm a USC fan. He grew up a UCLA fan, even though he's obviously a Miami guy now because of playing there. But uh, you didn't see that coming, did you? I didn't think the UCLA – I No, not like that. No. I know UCLA has gotten tougher from the midpoint of the year. I think I commented on that when they I picked them against Penn State. Yeah. They've been getting tougher, but to do that, Nebraska's been all over the place this year. Yeah, you know, and it may, it may be in retrospect trying to do a little self-scouting. I should have been a little leery of Nebraska coming off a great effort at Ohio State, but I, I kind of figured it would buoy them to a, a higher level, like, hey, we can play with some of these guys. And instead, they went out and flat-tired it. And then finally, um, I just used common sense and said, until 
Lincoln Riley shows me that he's got a solution on the road um, and stops with this nonsense of, well, we're one play away. Link, Link, you're coaching a blue blood program. We're not giving out, you know, points for no. we got close. Okay. That's you're not, not where you're at. Yeah. No. You're, you're not at Vanderbilt. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, though. It's tough for some of these coaches when you're in those press conferences to cut. Co- to say the words you need to say or find the words after a loss. There really aren't anything. There isn't anything you're going to say that's going to. He's got five okay. losses all the same way. Yeah, he's not really learning from the mistakes there. So No. So anyway, Washington plus two and a half had, was on an 18 game home winning streak. So I don't know who woke up on the bottle in Vegas last week, but that was an easy winner. One and two. I'm at 11 and 19. I need to get on a run. I'm going to go first here. I said this last week, and I got on the run in the NFL, so I feel like the worm is going to turn. I'm going to make this simple. Okay, we're not going to elaborate. First pick, we're taking Texas minus 21 and a half. Please buy the half point down. Make it an even 21 uh, if, if it's this line. This line may go up. I think Florida, they're on their third string quarterback. They gave everything they had last week and really fought Georgia tooth and nail in a rivalry game. I think that tank's emptied. And I think, as my partner here says, Texas will be scoreboard watching. Oh, um, no, no, not scoreboard watching, line watching. Line watching, excuse me, you're right. And I think they'll run scores up because if they were to lose an SEC title game, they need to be an at-large bid in this tournament and because that would be their second loss. So they're going to blow out whoever they can blow out. So give me Texas minus 21 and a half. Next one, I'm not thinking real hard here. I got caught overthinking lines. This line looks a little fishy to me, I'll be honest. But I'm taking Georgia minus two and a half at Mississippi. I think Mississippi's an entertaining team. Um, I'm with my partner pre, you know, before the year started. Chad had Mississippi, I think, eight and four or something like that. That's what they feel like to me. And I just don't see them stepping up in this spot and beating a motivated Georgia squad. So give me Georgia minus two and a half. And then finally, everybody on the show knows we're both big Dion fans. Chad a little bit more than me, but I'm a big Dion guy, and I love what he's doing at Colorado. And he's got the two best players on the field. But this this pizza, as Chad says, has a little too much cheese on it. A little too much cheese. Yeah, Texas is Texas, a tough home team. We've seen them take teams like Oregon to the mat in Lubbock and really give them all they can handle. I don't see how you have a 6-2 and two Colorado team playing a six and three Texas tech team and you install Colorado as a three and a half point favorite, but I'm happy to take those three and a half. So give me Texas tech plus three and a half. All right. Summing things up for my man, Amol here. He likes Texas 21 and a half over the visiting Florida Gators. Just thinks that's going to be a, you know, a blowout, blowout city. Florida's on an empty tank. He likes Uga minus two and a half versus Ole Miss. Seems like that margin slim enough. And then he is going to take te- Texas Tech at home. And he loves what Colorado is doing, but too much cheese on the pizza. Why are we laying points on the road with Colorado Buffs? All right, here's what I'm going with, Emil. I couldn't find a game that I really, really loved out of the Big Ten. It, the Big Ten has been really, really great for me this year, but I'm not going to just go in the Big Ten just to be the Big Ten. So I'm going to start off. If I can't get the Big Ten, let me get the Big 12. I'm going to go Iowa State, who just recently last week had their undefeated streak ended. You would think, all right, that might have them down in the doldrums. But no, I think Iowa State is, you know, rigid enough. They don't come into any season expecting anything. And that's what you like about Iowa State. They just go out and they win. They play solid football. I like them in this game against Kansas on the road, laying a small number. Now you say, hey, Kansas is a 2-6 and six football team. Why is this number so low? Well, Kansas is 2-6, and six, but Emil, all those losses basically have been one-possession football games. They have specialized in losing close games. And this is, a, according to the odds makers, going to be another close game. Why would I ask for them to stop doing what they've been doing all year long? And that is lose a close football game. Except I think Iowa State's probably at least a touchdown better than Kansas in this game. Add to that the motivation coming off of the loss and give me Iowa State minus three over Kansas. Now into the SEC. Um if you just woke up out of a coma and the first thing you heard was what I'm about to say, you're going to go back into the coma. <laughs> Vanderbilt as a three and a half point underdog in this game versus South Carolina. 
<laughs> Whether you like it or not, Vanderbilt is a good football team this year, folks. South Carolina might not think so. The prevailing opinion about Vandy is what it is, and it's tough. It's going to be very, very tough for Mr. Beamer to get his team up one week after beating Texas A&M by three-plus touchdowns to face Vandy, even with Vandy's record, even, by, even with the fact that Vandy beat Alabama this year and took Texas all the way to the mat, but that is what it is. Vandy is a damn good football team, a tough football team, and one that I don't think South Carolina can lay points on the road, especially more than a field goal. So I'm going to take Vanderbilt catching the field goal and a hook at home. So give me Vandy plus three and a half. Now I'm going to scroll over to the ACC. NC State was a team that came into this season with, uh, you know, people expecting some things that hasn't quite worked out that way. But over the last few weeks, NC State has been playing pretty solid ball. And they are showing themselves to kind of be that team that people thought they were coming into this season. Duke is coming into this game after a very emotional game last week. I'm sure, though they downplayed it going in, that this was not just another game for Manny Diaz, the coach removed from the University of Miami, who was going back down there trying to upset the undefeated Canes. Didn't get it done, got blown away in that second half, and I just think it's going to be a difficult situation for Duke to come back now, get themselves all lathered, lathered up and ready, to take on the NC State team that is surging. And Duke is having to go on the road to do this. And we're only asking NC State to lay a field goal here. I just think emotionally, NC State's going to be here. Duke's going to be down there. And so winning this game, I think, is in the hands of NC State. And we're only asking them to cover a field goal. Give me NC State, the more motivated and mentally ready team for this contest. Makes sense. My friend's got three tight lines here. Uh, he likes Iowa State laying three on the road. He likes Vanderbilt, which Vanderbilt six and three, right? Wow, unbelievable! Plus three and a half, and I love the logic on NC State. Makes perfect sense. NC State minus three over Duke. So then next next we got to get. We got to go to your favorite segment. It, it's you know what? It was my favorite segment until last week. Well, you can't just win them all, my friend. Let's start with the winners. Chad, Chad's got his off the sheet mark up to two and three because he got a win last week. He took South Florida. Minus two and a half for a nice win there. Really, that was a quality pick. You had a three and one when you really add them all together. You had a good Listen, when you can get wins on Friday night, it just sends you into Saturday feeling good. Oh, yeah. There's nothing like falling asleep, putting that head on the pillow, and knowing you're a winner before you even wake up on Saturday. Um, I went to the well one too many times, but then again, uh, you know, Army had a quarterback issue. Um, I thought they would blow out Air Force. The defense did what Army's defense does. They played very well, but they only got, you know, 20 points offensively, and they won this game 20-3. to three. Um, So I took a loss, my first one off the sheet this year. So my off the sheet stands now at 4-1, uh, and one. and I'm, I'm not going to take Army again this week. How about that? Hey, they're down a quarterback. I don't know if he's coming back, but it probably yeah, is. Yeah, you know, I found a better one. I found, I found a team that likes to ring up points. Well, since you're the king of that, let me go first in the well, office. First, go ahead. Let him wait for your hot uh, off the sheet. Go ahead. I'm going to go to Conference USA, Jacksonville State. If you guys have forgotten or you didn't know where he ended up, Rich Rodriguez down there at Jacksonville State doing his thing. And, um, you know, he's got these guys rolling. They're blowing people out left and right. And I think we've gotten to a situation where after, I think it is four straight weeks of massive blowouts in Jacksonville State, it's almost like they don't belong in that conference. It's seeming, seemingly, seemingly that's what it is. Odds makers have now got to find a number that they can't come. And I think that's the one that they've found this week. They're going on the road to Louisiana Tech, and now they're double-digit favorites. Too much cheese on the pizza. Yes, Louisiana Tech is a 3-5 and five football team, but they're – when you got teams like this, you got to like kind of discount the early season games. They lose to NC State. You know, they have a game against Tulsa. Yeah, yeah, they're not going to win those games. And that's just going to throw, you're going to throw those onto the ledger. But the last few weeks, they've shown themselves to be at least tough. They're two and two, but the games they've lost have been close. They've been on the road. They lost a close one in New Mexico State, lost a close one last week against Sam Houston State. So they come into this game motivated. They're coming off of a loss. Jacksonville State comes into this thing off of another blowout win. So I'm going to ride here with Louisiana Tech getting 10 points at home, double digits. I think the odds makers 
have gone a little too far to try and even up the ATS ledger for Jacksonville State. They are coming in. This this line is going to give them the wrong idea. Give me Louisiana Tech. You're really off the sheet this week. But I tell you, Louisiana Tech's a quality program long term. So, I mean, I like this pick. Louisiana Tech plus 10 at home. I have to use that myself this week. So, no, run with it. I found one, the Rice Krispies. Okay, they're going down. I'm not taking rice, folks. Calm right. down. <laughs> In case you were wondering. <laughs> they're going they're going to they're going to Graceland for a visit, right? Elvis, maybe? <laughs> yeah, so, right. So anyway, um, we got Memphis minus nine. Real simple here. They're gonna run this up. Ding, 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 ding. That's what Memphis does. I don't know. Actually. The line seems a little light to me. I think Memphis, if I got my numbers correct, is a seven and two football team right now. Rice comes in three and five, three and six. Uh, nine seems very fair to me. I'm glad to take, happy to take Memphis minus nine. So give me them off the sheet this week. All righty. So he's rolling with uh, Memphis minus nine over the Rice Krispies, as he calls them. That is Amos off the sheet pick. And well, here's what we're going to do before we go into the NFL. Let's just get be done with college and we're going to do our head to head. Now, here's how head to head works. If you're just cho- joining us here for the first time, we pick a game and Amel's going to take one side. I'm going to take the other side. And as this thing goes, whoever wins the game the week before gets to pick the game the next week. Amel has decided this week he's going to pick Notre Dame versus Florida State. And the way that this goes, he likes Notre Dame in this game. And me, as you, if you're watching on YouTube, you're seeing me with this hat on. I must now make a case for our arch rivals, Florida State. And because I'm the loser, I'm going to go first. And I'm going to make a case for Florida State. And if I said Florida State is not having a good season, I would be committing the biggest understatement of the year in anything, even outside of college football. This team played in the ACC championship last year. This team had a legit beat for not being in the, in the college football playoff, which, by the way, if you're new to college football, only consisted of four teams last year. They had a legit case, and they would have been in there had they not you know, lost the quarterback towards the end of the season. That very same program is now sitting here at one and seven. Yes. One and seven. This is the fall offs of all fall offs. They are not only falling off, they're getting beat by double digits now over the last couple of weeks. One of those was to my school, the University of Miami. They got blown out. But I'm going to dare say this, Emil, in their defense. If you're going to play, you got two more games this year where you're going to play, a, where you have an opportunity to play above what it is you have shown all season. That is this game right here against Notre Dame, who was at this point a rival because you've played enough um, over the years, and that final game against Florida. In preparation for that final game against Florida, you're going to show up in this game against Notre Dame. This is your chance to do one quality thing in the season because I'm here to tell you a 14-9 to win over Cal earlier this year is not quality. It's not that one good thing. This is you, one of your final chances to do something good in your season. And after the abortion of last week, 35 to 11, Florida State stand up man to man in that room. You've got to look each other in the eye and say, this has been a horrible year. It is what it is. We need to go out here as men, guys with a sack and do something. And that is try to ruin Notre Dame's season. Let's show people what we're made of. If you've got at least three guys in your locker room with pride, this is it. I'm going to close with this. Why is it this game minus 28? Why is it not minus 28 now? Why is it this very odd spread of 26? You don't see 26 almost ever. It goes 27. It goes 25. It goes. Tw- it doesn't fall on 26. Wait, this is what you got for me? This is what I got. And you better take it to the bank, you folks watching. This number is 26 and not 28 for a reason. So, I'm telling you, the boys in Vegas know something, and that is the back door is always open when you're at Florida State. <laughs> <laughs> you know what this 
He's like that whole dissertation. You were like the kid that gets the essay question. Just know this, folks. I'm looking into the camera. And I'm sorry for you folks that are listening to the podcast. When you're a Seminole, the back door is always open. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you, you're like a kid who got the essay question, didn't have an answer, and just talked for five minutes. There's no way. Hey, hey folks, think back door. Think back door all uh, weekend. I got Florida State. Hey. Notre Dame, Notre Dame, that Northern Illinois loss has clued me into one thing with Notre Dame. They're not going to let it happen again this season. Every mm. time they've gotten a chance against an inferior team, especially at home, they have stepped on their throat in a big way. And, you know, I'm not getting caught on the other side of Notre Dame again this year in one of these games where it's a mismatch. I've already had it happen. Isn't happening for me. This game, It'll be hell shot. At this game, especially with what Florida State's showing offensively, this just reeks of like forty-five to ten, almost like what Florida State did last week. I mean, the same thing. No, that's not enough points. I can't believe I'm saying this. If you told me this in 1987, that I would somehow be on a, a show. Talking about Florida State getting 26 points in a football game, I would tell you you're nuts. But there, that's where we're at. I want Notre Dame minus 26 here. I smell 45-24, but we're going to find out. You're like going to smell all right, but remember, the back door will be open if you're seven. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's going to do it for us with college football. Hey, sports fans, if you're looking to take your game day excitement to a whole new level, then you got to check out Bovada Sportsbook. Whether you're into football, basketball, it's baseball, playoff times, pretty much any sport, Bovada has everything you need. Best odds, live betting, and fast, secure payouts. And here's the best part. When you sign up today, Bovada is giving you a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's up to $250. That's free money to get you started just for joining the action. It's super easy to sign up. and They've got you covered with all the top games, player props, and more. Ready to bet, win, and repeat? Head over to Bavada and get in the game. Check out the link down in the description below. And let's go get those winners. Oh, and it's time now for us to head over to the NFL. Emil is going to give you the rundown on the numbers and how we've been doing there, how we did last week. Our sponsors were not happy at Bavada because anybody who took our NFL picks on a Sunday, they really beat they really beat up Bavada. But it's a great sports book, so you know, take the picks this week and. Uh, Beat them up again with them. We were both uh, big week, five and one overall between us. Chad was uh, two and one. His record on the year is 19 and eight. He had a great winner with Jacksonville plus seven and a half. This man may dislike the Philadelphia Eagles more than me, and I'm a Cowboys fan. I mean, he really, no, I actually love the Eagles. Yeah, you love them because you keep you keep betting against them and making money. Um, he also had Arizona, minus one, which was my pick as well, so we don't have to co cover that twice. I had the Cardinals as well. Cardinals somehow, uh, are they five and four now? Or four? I think they are they might be an even four and four. Four and four, that's right. Four and four, five and four. Yeah, they got the outright against the, Dolph uh, the Dolphins last week, right? No, 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 that Look, was, that was they had the Bears. They had the Bears. struggling Caleb Bears. Williamses. I, 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 I've been on Arizona so much winning with them. They're actually one of my teams. That, yes, I forgot. It was the Bears last week, the Dolphins week before. And then finally, your loser, uh, the Raiders, I don't, I don't know what to tell you there. I'm, and look, I've been running the Raiders thing for a while. Yeah. I, I, I told myself I'll ride that pony. Until it breaks down, it broke down last. Yeah, I mean, they got you the win the week before, but you took a loss against – they they played, what was it, 41-24 they lost to the Bengals, something like that? Yeah, and then fired everyone on the offensive yeah, side. Yeah, they fired everybody. So, Chad, again, 2-1, and 19-8. Just keep following this guy. I mean, 19-8 and eight is an insane record in any kind of gambling, especially this NFL. Me, I finally righted the ship. I had my 3-0 and week. Thank you. I started off with the Falcons. Against my Cowboys, they probably made this game more difficult on the scoreboard than it had to be because they were in control the entire second half. They won the game 27-21, but it was never really that close. So that was an easy winner. I took the Washington Redskins. That's right. You heard it right. The Redskins. That's what they That's are. That's what we call them on this they show. They will always be the Redskins. They won by five. There's another team 
They were given four, made it much closer than it really was. They were in total control that game versus the Giants. And then finally, I did take the Cardinals, as we just discussed. So 3-0, and I'm at 13-14, and another winning week, and I go over the Mendoza line there. Look, on that note of being 3-0 and and flowing well, jump into your picks this week. Let's keep it going. Easy this week. Um, I was a lot higher on the Rams preseason than Chad. I think they're starting to round into form. They've got, in my mind, one of the three best coaches in the league. I'm a big Sean McVay fan. I think he gets a lot out of his team. I think he's always prepared. Uh He's hard to believe the guy's only like 37 or 38 years old. It seems like he's been around for a long time. Uh, I like them this week against the Dolphins. Uh, I know the Dolphins got a win last week, but um, something's not right there with that team. And I think the Rams are going to take the – it's only a one-point line. They're home. So give me the Rams minus one. The next pick is has nothing to do with me and the Lions. I love the Lions. I think they're the best team in the league right now. But I think it's a big ask to have the Lions go defeat a division rival like the Packers on the road and then go on the road again this week against a capable Texans team laying more than a field goal. So I'm going to grab the Texans. It's a situational play. They're getting three and a half at home. I think if the Lions win this game, it is by a field goal. I think it's a tough ball game. I think the Texans might get the out right here. So give me them plus three and a half. And then finally, I'm jumping on the Cardinals again, minus one. I mean, <laughs> I'm ride the pony, man. I'm, I'm riding that train. Uh, it, it's it's a short line at home. I think they're getting no respect, and this is purely about me. I'm a big Kyler Murray fan. I think when he's on the field, he can mask a lot of problems that still exist in Arizona, and they're probably not as good as their record indicates. And they may crater later in the year as injuries creep in and their depth gets tested. But right now. They're in a good spot mentally, and they're only laying one point. So give me Arizona minus one. All right, summing things up. My man here likes the Los Angeles Rams at home, greeting the struggling Miami Dolphins. Only got to lay one point there, so he's going to take the L.A. Rams. He likes Houston to throw a little bit of water on the red-hot Detroit Lions. They're getting three and a half points at home. That's kind of too much, he thinks, for a really good football team. And then he's going to continue to ride the Arizona train taking them as a one-point favorite against the, shall I say, overhyped New York Jets. He's going to take them minus one in that contest. Here's what I'm rolling with this week, Emil. I'm going to get the Minnesota Vikings. They're minus four and a half on the road in this game against Jacksonville. Yes, I profited off of Jacksonville last week, but I more profited off of the Philadelphia Eagles than I did the Jacksonville Jaguars. Because if you watch this game, the Jaguars were dead out of the water. They just were getting completely handled, and they have not been the football team that people think that they were going to be this season. Me being included, especially everyone in Duval County, um, they are not that football team. Tyler, I mean, Trevor Lawrence, has he has struggled with confidence. That's what I'm seeing on film. Doesn't want to push the football down the field. His best pass is a dump down to, to, to Etienne. This is over and over and over. And in a game like this against a Minnesota Vikings football team that could kind of avalanche you, this is not going to work. I don't like Trevor Lawrence going up against that Minnesota defense and what Brian Flores is doing right now. That's that's a potential nightmare for them. And if they fall behind and now he has to do something he's not comfortable with, pushing the football down the field, I don't like Jacksonville in that situation. Um, We all think Sam Darnold is having his best season in the NFL um minnesota has the type of offense that could go crazy here and i just feel like now the win off of those back-to-back losses i think minnesota's feeling good and they can get back on the roll that they were on to start this season less than a touchdown is not too much against this particular opponent in my opinion so i'm going to take minnesota minus four and a half speaking of riding a train I'm going to ride the anti-Philadelphia Eagles train for whatever reason since A.J. Brown has gotten back. You know what? I don't even want to say it's when A.J. Brown got back. They've just um, – I'm not, I've not checked Philadelphia's ATS record. It just seems week after week they're putting too much cheese on their pizza. And once again, they are doing that against the Dallas Cowboys, their rival. Now, I know Dallas, you – you know, look, anyone watching this can look over your shoulder there and see <laughs> that – You are a Dallas Cowboys fan, and you know the recent history against the Philadelphia Eagles. I think this has probably fueled a lot. The Philadelphia Eagles are not that. We saw that last week. They just couldn't focus for an entire football game, 
and got me an ATS win against the Jaguars. Yes, the Cowboys are down Dak Prescott. That makes them unpredictable of this going into this game from a play call perspective. Cooper rushes in there. Yes, he's not brand new, but there isn't a ton of film out there on him. And um, as Amel mentioned to me off camera, and he made a good point, this is probably a chance for Mike McCarthy to dig in his bag a little bit. Let's do some things differently and break some tendencies. And that's always, I'm speaking to you as a former defensive coordinator, it's problematic for you on that side of the ball. So I think the Cowboys will benefit from that. And you know what, Cowboys, you need to kind of stand up, right, and make yourself accountable. You're running out of time in this season to do that. And the best place to do that is at home against a division rival. Seven points is too much right here for the Eagles, okay? They're going to win this game probably a field goal with the guy with the funny shoe on, or they win by four. I can't see them covering seven on the road here. Finally, Amel, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to get on that train with you as well. I profited from it last week. We'll do it again. Minus one is too low of a number right now for the Arizona Cardinals. They're playing good football. I'm with you. They're probably not as good as their record. But then um, combined with the fact that the New York Jets aren't that. Uh, yes, they got a win last week, and everyone's forgotten what the previous two weeks looked like for the New York Jets. Aaron Rodgers is not the Aaron Rodgers that you saw in Green Bay. Still a good football player, still a quality quarterback, but not that guy. he's not that guy, pal. All right? He's not that right now. Um, Devontae Adams is still trying to work himself in there into, you know, what he needs to be in this offense, if he can be that. I just don't like the way the whole thing is running over there. So um, this number is far too small. Just a team that's playing well versus a team that's not playing so well. And the team that's playing well is at home. We're asking them to just win the football game here. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to take Arizona minus one versus the New York Jets. So my friend here recapping, he's got the Minnesota Vikings at home laying four and a half over the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's got my favorite team, the Dallas Cowboys, as a big home underdog, plus seven against their rivals, the Eagles. Micah Parsons should be back this week. We'll see if he has an impact on that game. And then finally, he's taking the Arizona Cardinals like I am, minus one against the three and six New York Jets. So they've essentially made the Jets a pick them at three and six. That I don't see it. I'm with you. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't get that one. All right, time now for Amol to give us his survivor pick. No, 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 week. we got to go. We got to go head to head here. I you want to go head to head? You want to end it with the survivor? I'll give you the survivor quick at the end. The head to head. Right. Uh, I'm on the Washington Redskins again, minus two and a half against the Steelers. Listen, I'm surprised by both these teams. Preseason, I had the Redskins as an eight and nine team, which was over their, their projected total. So I thought they'd be a pretty decent football team. I never saw 7-2 and two coming. And, uh, you know, they're home here. The Steelers at 6-2 and two are a surprise. I just – I don't think it's enough points for them. I think this is a competitive ball game throughout. But in the end, I think the Redskins have a little too much offensive firepower for the Steelers to stay up with them. And, you know, if you're only getting two and a half points, essentially, you almost have to win the game. I mean, that's pretty much the way it goes. I don't see the Steelers walking in there and getting a win. So I'm, I got to, I got to take the skins here. Right. And just to remind folks how this whole thing works, um, whoever wins the head to head matchup one week picks the game the next week. So I won last week. So I picked this game. So I have a really good feeling about the Pittsburgh Steelers walking into this. One of the most terrible things that can happen to a rookie quarterback is facing a really good defense. And that, my friends, is exactly what it is that we have right here with the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've been playing lights out defense. Only one team this year has managed to score over 20 points on this Pittsburgh defense, and that is Indianapolis somehow, some kind of way. Um, other than that, out of their eight opponents, six of them have been held under 20 points, and that includes the last two weeks. 15 and 18 for the Jets and Giants, respectively. What now the Steelers have added to all of that is the ability to have a little bit more of an offensive attack, the ability to put the uh, push the ball down the field. Russell Wilson has looked very un-Denver Bronco-like in his two starts for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I guess it's just really about where you are and not necessarily who you are sometimes in the NFL. Yes, Russ is getting a little long in the tooth, but... I like his ability now to push the football down the field, obviously more than Justin Fields. This was a really good move by Mike Tomlin. He didn't wait for the losses to come in. He saw what he saw, and he made an executive move. So when you combine that with Pittsburgh's defense and the fact that, though he's playing well, Jaden Daniels is a rookie quarterback, 
I don't think this run here for Washington, who are the, I call this syrup Aunt Jemima, and I'm calling the team the Washington Redskins. I don't think the Washington Redskins can continue their run here. I'm calling time out. Time out on this the Steelers defense stuff. You do realize that if we locked the Giants and Jets in a stadium and, and they ran offensive plays against no defense, just a ghost, they just ran the plays, they might not score 20, okay? Look, I get that. The but they also, they also did this to Atlanta. They also did this to uh, the Chargers. I mean, like, yeah, maybe we don't respect the last two opponents, okay, well, but there's consistency. We'll have to see season. next week who wins this, but I feel very good about I'll be picking the pro game next week. We will definitely see about that. So listen, I've got a survivor pick for you this week. Let's have it, my friend. And I'll give you credit here. Preseason, you were much higher on the Los Angeles Chargers in that you thought that Harbaugh would turn them around relatively quickly. And what he does. He does what he does. And because he because he has to, because he only he grates on everybody. And in five years, everybody wants him out of the building. So it's gotta be quick. Okay. There'll be a slew of retirement announcements. He's like a microwave. And he did it. I mean, they're what are they, six and three? I think they're six and three. Yes, they are. Uh, it's a really good football team. And you want to talk about good defense. They lead the NFL in defense right now. And you one thing that always travels. Check that. They're a five and three football team. Close exactly. enough. But their their defense is solid. They're playing good football. I think they're giving up 12, 13, 14 points a game in there. That makes it very difficult for them to lose an outright game against a bad opponent like the Titans at home. So in a survivor situation where all I need is a win, I don't care if they cover spread. I just don't see the Titans walking into that building and coming away with an outright win. So for your survivor pick, if you still have them available, grab the Chargers. I would agree with you on that. And plus the Titans come in here very satisfied off of their win last week yeah. that they needed to go into overtime against the Patriots to get. So you also got that working for you. And the Chargers watching the Chiefs just keep winning each and every week. We won't talk about like how some of these games are being won. Emil, I don't I don't I don't want to go there, but mm-hmm. let's start checking some people's fan duels accounts. Yes. I mean But anyway, they are out there and they can run away with this division if Chargers don't stand up and say something. We're not relying on the Raiders to do anything. No. And Denver's hit or miss. So the Chargers are gonna have to be the one I like to pick and we'll really good good job there for you. All right. So we sum up last week. We're sending you into this weekend with all the winning picks and vibes that you need to get. You're trying to walk out of this weekend with some money. It would be in your best interest to listen to one Amo Calamino and Chad Wilson, who just broke all this down for you. And just so you don't continue to miss shows and offer your money, offer your book, their opportunity to take the money back away from you. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on your streaming device, whatever you're using to listen to the two chubs football podcast. Hit that up right there. Hope you like the show. We are out of here. Enjoy your weekend. For Amo Calamino, I'm Chad Wilson. Thanks for watching and listening to Two Chumps Football Podcast. See you guys next week.